If you like these videos and you want to see them a day early, consider heading over to Library. It's an awesome alternative to YouTube. There's a link in the description. Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite sweaty and disgusting content creator, Gardner. <laughs> Don't take Jesus' name in vain, my dude. Well, I mean, you did say Jesus, so I mean, I guess we're good. It's 2020. Where is the Librem 5? At this point, I have been talking about the Librem 5 for literally years. The original crowdfunding campaign was back in 2017, and yeah, that's a long time, but that was kind of the point of it, right? Purism bit off a lot with this project, and it was very ambitious. I mean, even from the very beginning. I knew it. We all knew it. The Libra 5 was not just about a phone that used free software. Uh, it never was just that. It was a top-to-bottom privacy and freedom-respecting phone designed from scratch, purpose-built. They not only had to develop the software, but they had to organize a community, design the hardware, write and or optimize the drivers, get them into the Linux kernel, develop GTK libraries to allow apps to display responsively and behave correctly with a touchscreen, create apps to handle phone calls, text messages, and other standard phone functions, and get developers on board to build apps for the device for the future. Though I wish that they had been a little more realistic with their projections, I understand that they might not have realized how much work it would actually end up being. I think it's rather understandable that they missed their original timeline, uh, given the amount of work that they had to do, but let's not forget that what they have done currently up to this point, where we're pretty close to their release, uh, is monumental. So the Librem 5 dev kits shipped out to people uh, in 2018. They were in hand and people were able to work with real hardware. The Librem 5 began shipping in batches in 2019. Uh, Todd actually flew out to Maine to meet me with an Aspen device and I got to try it out. Uh, it was awesome. He's a really cool dude. I got to ask him so many uh, questions about the device. Uh, and when I got my hands on the device, I knew they had a lot of work left to do. <laughs> then, then the Birch batch shipped and I was able to play around with that. Uh, I made a video about it. Um, you can check it out up here. Uh, keep in mind, everything in that video is kind of outdated at this point. They're almost on a, a whole second generation away from that device at this point. But it was awesome. It was, you know, it, I, there were clear improvements over the Aspen batch. Uh, clear hardware improvements, clear software improvements, better performance, but there was still work to be done. Chestnut followed, and they shipped me another uh, device to try. Uh, Chestnut, honestly, from a user experience standpoint, which is the thing that I'm most interested in, I didn't see a lot that I could sink my teeth into for a video. I, I, they sent me the thing and I didn't make a video about it because I just didn't have a lot to say. But the next hardware revision, Dogwood, is coming up uh, and it is pretty impressive looking. One of the most immediate things that you notice with the Dogwood batch is a cover for the Wi-Fi antenna and the modem uh, M2 slots. The, the other devices didn't have a cover under the battery cover for those two devices. But as soon as Dogwood launches, we are just one step away from the final hardware revision, Evergreen. And that's what I'm most excited about. Uh, I can't wait to get my hands on Evergreen. Um, I can't wait to have a final product in my hand years later. But you know what? I signed up for a long development cycle. Uh, I invested in a brand new privacy and security focused hardware platform. I'm not broken up about it. I'm not bitter. I know that there are a lot of bitter people out there, uh, but I'm not one of them. The Librem 5 isn't just hardware, though. It's also uh, software. It, it's a complete stem-to-stern, purpose-built operating system, along with apps that let you use the phone as a phone. <laughs> PureOS has been in heavy development for the Librem 5 for a long time. They've submitted thousands of changes to the kernel. They've upstreamed their device drivers. They've increased performance, thermals, and power management, all with their changes to the kernel. But PureOS also comes with a custom compositor called Foch, P-H-O-C, <laughs> and a custom GNOME-based shell called Fosh. The, the custom shell is optimized for mobile, 
uh, and touchscreens. The Librem 5 also comes with a bunch of custom built software, including a contact manager, a phone dialer, an SMS and messaging system, an app store, and a virtual keyboard, and a whole bunch of other things. All of these were either built by Purism or were adapted by Purism for the Librem 5. Also, a ton of work and resources has gone into Lib Handy, which is one of the things Todd said he was most proud about with the Librem 5 project. Lib Handy is a uh, library for GTK apps to allow responsive uh, convergent design uh, of GTK applications. So you can use these apps on your desktop and just move them over to your phone and then boom, you're in uh, phone mode and it, it changes the layout of the application. And I have to say, Lib Handy is impressive. So the question is, where is the Librem 5? Well, I think the long development cycle uh, is a testament to just what they're trying to achieve here. You know, they didn't set out to just create a new Android phone that's like privacy aware. There's a ton of those on the market and eh. They set out to create a private, secure, and IP native ecosystem. And uh, gotta say, I'm still on board. That's gonna do it for this video. If you like what I do here, if you believe in the work that I do, you can support the show over on Patreon. It makes a huge difference. I wanna thank my top tier Singularity member, Nima. Nima, my dude, your support is truly appreciated. Well, if you like this, head over to library. It's a good time. I apologize for the shorter videos for the last week or so. I've been working on some personal stuff a bit. I've got some personal stuff going on in my life, so I'm just trying to make sure that uh, I get the content out for you guys. So that's gonna do it. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you guys later.